Hello, greetings everyone. Today, we are diving into the secrets of another little component, the capacitor. You might not know it, but capacitors are all around us, concealed within our electronics devices such as phones, computers, and are widely used in our electrical system. So, let's get started by understanding, what is a capacitor? A capacitor is an electrical component that stores electrical energy for later use. It's like a special container that holds electrical energy in the form of an electric field. A capacitor is made up of two conductor plates, separated by a special material called dielectric. This dielectric acts as an insulating substance, allowing the conductor plates to be very close to each other, but preventing current from flowing directly between them. In a DC circuit, the conductor plate that connects to the positive terminal of power source is known as anode, and the one connected to the negative terminal is known as cathode. Now, when we apply voltage to the capacitor, something fascinating happens. The electric field of the voltage source causes the atoms in the dielectric material to polarize and rearrange themselves. This results in a layer of positive and negative charges on opposite surfaces of the dielectric. Because of the electrostatic forces, where light charges repel and opposite charges attract each other, this can affect the movement of free electrons on the conductor plates and circuit loop. The free electrons near the anode will experience a reflective force and being pushed towards the positive terminal of power source. On the other hand, free electrons are attracted to the cathode from negative terminal. These electrons' movement in single direction is also considered as current flowing. But it's important to remember that the current does not actually flow in between the two conductor plates, because dielectric is made of non-conducting material. As the charges accumulate, anode of the capacitor becomes positively charged, while the cathode becomes negatively charged, and this process is known as charging the capacitor. After a certain period of time, once the capacitor reaches a specific point, where the number of charges on its plates doesn't increase anymore, it is considered fully charged. At this stage, the capacitor has stored as much electrical energy as it can hold, acting like a spring being pressed and waiting to be released. An electric field builds up between the conductor plates and holds the charges in place, acting as a temporary storage of electrical energy. This special ability to store energy temporarily makes capacitors useful in a wide range of applications, ready to unleash the stored energy at just the right moment. If you enjoy the content, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell, so you never miss any update. Now, you might be wondering what factors affect the maximum amount of charge or energy that a capacitor can store. The first factor is voltage of the power source. The higher the voltage applied, the higher the number of charges can be stored in the same capacitor. This happens because when a higher voltage is applied, it creates a stronger electric field that polarizes the dielectric material even more. As a result, there's a stronger electrostatic force, causing more positive and negative charges to gather on the plates. However, it is important to note that every capacitor has a maximum voltage limit. Exceeding the limit can cause the dielectric to break down and potentially lead to the capacitor exploding. So, it's crucial to use capacitors within their specified voltage ratings for safety. In cases where the same voltage is applied, different capacitor designs will store different amounts of charge. Capacitor is measured in terms of capacitance, and the standard unit is farad. Basically, capacitance tells us how much charges a capacitor can hold for a given voltage. So, the capacitor with higher capacitance value can hold more charges compared to those with lower capacitance when the same voltage is applied. Capacitance is influenced by various factors. First, let's consider the plate area of a capacitor. The bigger the plate area, the more charges it can hold. It is just like having a larger bucket that can hold more water. Next, consider the distance between the plates. According to Coulomb's law, when the plates are closer to each other, they can hold more charges because the electric field is stronger. So, a smaller distance between conductor plates means higher capacitance. Lastly, the permittivity of the dielectric material can significantly affect the capacitance. 
Permittivity is the measure of how easily a dielectric can become polarized under the influence of an electric field. Materials with higher permittivity are easier to polarize and facilitate greater charge redistribution. This results in a stronger electrostatic force, allowing more charges to accumulate on the conductor plates. Common dielectric materials like ceramic, tantalum, and polymers have different permittivity values. With the same voltage applied, the degree of polarization varies, allowing capacitors with different capacitance values to be designed. Let's use a simple circuit to visualize how a capacitor works. Picture this, a capacitor and a light bulb connected in series to a battery. As we turn on the switch, the bulb instantly lights up, and then fades away. Let's break down what is happening step by step. As we mentioned earlier, when we turn on the switch, an electric field builds up and propagates throughout the circuit loop due to the battery voltage. The established electric field will polarize the dielectric material. The electrostatic force pushes the free electrons, producing a current flow, and charges gather on the plates of the capacitor. That's why the bulb appears very bright initially because a larger current is flowing through it. As the charging process continues, and more opposite charges build up on both plates, the voltage across the capacitor increases gradually. At the same time, the current decreases, causing the bulb to gradually become dimmer. Eventually, the capacitor becomes fully charged when it reaches the same voltage as the source. At this point, no more charges can gather on the plates, no current is flowing, and the bulb turns off. Now, if we remove the capacitor from the circuit, the charges that were stored on its plates will still accumulate there. This happens because an electric field is created between the plates of the capacitor which holds the positive and negative charges in place, acting as a temporary energy storage. When measured using a voltmeter, we will still get a voltage reading because the charges are still present. That's why it's important to discharge the capacitor before handling it, to avoid any unexpected electrical accident. Subsequently, if we remove the battery and replace it with a wire. The charges that were stored in the capacitor are unleashed, the current starts flowing again, and this process is known as discharging. Along the discharging process, both the voltage and current gradually decreases until all the charges at capacitor's plates are completely released. This process can be indicated by the bulb initially shines brightly, but gradually becomes dimmer and completely goes off. Now, let's explore how a capacitor operates in an AC circuit. In our previous video, we explained that in a circuit with only resistor, the voltage and current are in phase. However, in an inductive circuit, the current lags behind the voltage by about 90 degrees. In a capacitive circuit, it's the opposite. The current leads the voltage by around 90 degrees. To calculate this, we use the formula where the capacitor's current equals the capacitance, multiplied by the rate of change of voltage. At the peak voltage point, the rate of change of voltage is zero, resulting in no current flows during this time. Conversely, when the rate of change of voltage is at its maximum, the current reaches its peak. The unique characteristics of capacitors have made them incredibly useful in many different ways. For example, in power conditioning, capacitors act as an essential component in rectifiers to convert AC to DC. Capacitor helps in smoothing out the voltage fluctuations. It charges up when the voltage is higher and discharges when the voltage is low to boost the voltage, ensuring a steady power supply. Power factor correction is another important application of capacitors. In factories, motors, and other inductive loads can cause the current to lag behind the voltage, resulting in a drop in power factor. By installing capacitor that provides leading effect, we can offset this lag and bring the current and voltage back in phase. This improves the power factor, making electrical systems more efficient. When it comes to photography, capacitors are essential in camera flashes. Capacitor stores electrical energy and releases it in a short burst, producing a bright and instant flash of light to capture images in low-light conditions. In electronics devices, capacitors are widely used for electrical signal filtering, removing unwanted noise and disturbances from the electrical signals. They are also used in timing circuits to control frequencies and generate precise time intervals. 
These examples highlight just a few of the many applications of capacitors. To sum up, although capacitor is just a simple component made of two conductor plates and separated by dielectric, the ability to temporarily store electrical energy has made significant contributions to the functionality and efficiency of the electrical and electronic systems we rely on today. That concludes our topic today. If you have learned something from our video, please remember to like, subscribe, turn on the notification bells, and share it with others. Thank you.